Hello, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to episode 18 of my Pro Tools 11 video tutorial series. In this episode, I'm going to talk about a pretty simple editing function called Strip Silence. What Strip Silence does is it allows you to take out material on a track that is below a certain threshold. So it lets you automatically trim that material or crop that material out. So in my example, it's uh, going to be particularly useful for our kick track here, where we have some bleed from the toms from the snare, from the hi-hat, and other instruments if I just want to sort of isolate each kick hit into its own little clip. Now, if you were to do this manually, you could do it sort of with uh, with tab to transients, or you could drag over each one of these individually, hit B to cut it out. That's just way too much work. So Strip Silence sort of does it for you uh, automatically. It batch processes all of those edits. Um, so let's listen to what we've got here, all the drums together. It's, this is the same drum kit that we comped uh, in the previous episode, in episode 17, um, I've just done a little bit of mixing on it, so let's listen to this. All right, um, this is what the kick drum sounds by itself. There you go. Um, so what we're going to do is we are going to isolate each kick hit from any of the ba extraneous background noise. Now generally when I use strip silence I like to test it out on just a small area first and then I'll batch process everything all together all at once. Um, so to test it I'm just going to go to this area here and just uh, drag over this section and hit B to separate it from everything else. And the reason why I do a test a test section is because you can zoom in on it a little bit better and see what you're doing. If you're really zoomed out and there's hundreds of kick hits that you're looking at, it's kind of difficult to see what you're doing. So let's just click on that clip now, go up to edit, and go down to strip silence. You can also use the key command, uh, command U or control U on a PC. All right. So there's four different uh, controls for strip silence. There's strip threshold, minimum strip duration, clip start pad, and clip end pad. What I like to do is I like to start with the bottom three faders all the way down and the top fader all the way up. And what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna pull the strip threshold down. This determines what the threshold for stripping is. So is it negative uh, 22 dB or is it way down here? So the further you go down, the longer each strip is going to be because it's going to pick up more material in the background. So it's going to be more sensitive material in the background when you have it at a lower setting. And it's going to be less sensitive to material in the background at a higher setting. So I want to put this at a real high setting because I just want each kick to come through. I don't want these snare hits to come through like here. Um, so I'm going to put this real high up. So I just see kick, 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 kick. Nothing else. I think there's some toms or something here too. The minimum strip duration is the actual length of each strip, of each uh, clip, I should say, really. Um, I'm going to try to, uh, generally what I like to do is I like, well, the, the, the minimum strip duration is what the minimum length each strip can be. So if you start pulling this up, you're going to find that some of these merge together. I'm going to keep it all the way down. Uh, the clip start pad will put sort of like a buffer before each uh, strip. So you can do that or that if you want to sort of have like a little bit of like a, a little bit of like a lead in so you don't cut off the uh, the transit you can do that I'm going to keep this all the way down though and the one I'm going to use um, that's really useful here is the clip end pad now I don't want to just have this tiny little strip I want it to be a little bit longer because I don't want it to sound like it's too cut off or too gated sounding by the way you can do the same thing with a gate plug in it's just I, I like using strip silence and processing the waveform rather than using a gate anyway. So after we're done, it looks like I've just got one little clip um, for each um, kick hit. I'm gonna hit strip and it gets rid of everything else. So I'm gonna take this same setting and I'll apply it to the first half of the song and the second half. 
And there we go. So now what I'm left with is a bunch of little And it's not always perfect either. I mean, sometimes it picks up on little things like up here, it left these in. That's fine, I'll just go in and manually trim that up. Right here, let a snare drum through, I'm gonna delete that. Up here, it lets some of this this tom fill through. Let some of the snare drum here through. So I probably could have used a, a a higher threshold. And so sometimes you'll find yourself going in here and manually deleting some of these extra extra notes. But it beats doing the whole thing manually. All right, now. The problem with this is always it sounds really choppy and nasty sounding. You know, we've got our kick drum isolated, but it just sounds really choppy. So there is there is a way around this. Um, one of the things I love about Logic, um, and one of the things I showed in the Logic video series was that you can drag over multiple clips and you can sort of batch fade them all at the same time. You can do the same thing in Pro Tools, it's just not quite as intuitive as it is in Logic. Um, there isn't just like a little option where you say, let's apply a 30 millisecond or 50 millisecond fade to every single clip. What you have to do is drag over all the clips that you want to apply a fade to, hit Command F, and what you have to do, normally what you get is you'll, is you'll get like a, a crossfade like this. We don't want to crossfade these clips. That's not going to do us any good at all, it's gonna fade in and fade out. So uh, let's, what we're gonna do is on our in shape, we are going to apply a square fade. So basically no fade, a square fade. Um, you're gonna wanna make sure that the link option is, is off, so you say none, create a square fade. And on the out shape, we're gonna create really any shape you want, um, but I'm gonna just use like the linear fade. And then you can set a length for your fade. I'm going to say 100 milliseconds. So you say OK. I'm going to say adjust to fit. And what it does is it, it essentially puts a square fade on the front end of the clip. It's just a square fade doesn't really do anything. But then it adds a 100 millisecond fade to each of the other clips. Um, so let's try doing this to all of our clips now. So now every single one of these clips has a short little fade on it. It's gonna sound less gated sounding. As long as it turns out for you, you can just drag over everything and hit uh, Shift Option 3. And you can consolidate all these kick hits into a new file, so now there's no background noise. Now you have to be careful with what you use strip silence on. Um, a lot of people like to use it on snare and toms. Um, I'm a big I'm a big fan of using it on kick, um, but I'm not a big fan of using it on the snare drum uh, because sometimes it tends to cut off the tail end of the snare. And the snare is pretty much one of, you know, one of the drums in the drum kit that's used the most. So I'm very hesitant to use it on snare drum. Sometimes I'll use it like on the upper toms. Um, the bottom tom tends to ring a bit too much for it to really work out, but sometimes you can use it on the upper tom track to just isolate toms um, by themselves. Like, you know, if, if I wanted to use my tom one here by itself, there's only really two or three spots in the song where the toms actually use it here, here, here and here. So if I wanted to, I could click on that, do command U, set a quite a high strip threshold. So I just get those four sections there. Let's zoom in on this one. Make the uh, clip end pad kind of longer. 
something like that. And then strip. And now I just have just these four tom hits. But again, we're going to have to go back in here because there's a lot of crash symbol in those tracks too and add fades to these tom hits. So I mean, it sort of depends on what the genre of music is. If this was like heavy metal or rock where you want a lot of isolation, a lot of sort of intricate, almost surgical sounding uh, drum patterns, you may consider doing something like this just to, to cut down the bleed. Uh, for a song like this, this is like a blues tune. I sort of want the drums to sound as organic and natural as possible. So I probably wouldn't do something like this for the tom, but let's just see what it sounds like with everything together now. See if we get a little more uh, isolation and, and clarity. Yeah, it's not too bad. I mean, it actually cleans it up a little bit. We were getting a lot of crash cymbal ring um, and hi-hat ring in the first tom. I would be hesitant to use strip silence much on floor toms just because they ring so much. And also because the the usually the ride cymbal is right next to the floor tom, so that can cause some issues as well. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.